Japan. Hello there. Morning. <laughs> It's not morning when this goes out. It's, It's morning not. right now, though. <laughs> Katie just woke up an hour ago, so I'm still tired. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. But we're still recording because you know we are champions and doing this yeah, stuff. Also, I made plans today, <laughs> and that's the other thing. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, before we go any further uh, into today's topic and whatever, thank you, everyone, because we are going above 100 views uh, with each podcast that we are putting out now. So that's great. Uh, Yay. We well, like we that. What we need to do is take two months off. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, so, you know, uh, the, the other thing that you can also do, because we always read the comments, is just leave a comment of what did you think about the topics that we talked about, uh, whatever. And about us, maybe. Uh, but don't be mean. mean. <laughs> We're nice people. You know. So, yeah, you can be mean. It's fine. No, don't. We're just, we're just going <laughs> to cry in the corner. It's okay. <laughs> just don't. If you have mean things, just leave. I don't, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> uh, that's it. Done. Uh, all right. Do you want to introduce uh, our podcast, please? Mm, yes. <clears throat> do you remember our podcast? <laughs> no, I do. I just am trying to wake up to, <laughs> you know, bring back the enthusiasm. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily K. What else is new? Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing It's at just all. Just us. Uh, you just have to love us and deal with it. Just uh, us chickens. Yes. Uh, all right. I'm going to quickly ask if you watched something interesting in the past week or not. I rewatched The Royal Tenenbaums the other day. Okay. I never um, liked that movie. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it a lot when I first watched it. I liked it less this time around. Um, I don't know if I just didn't understand some of the characters when I watched it for the first time, but I, um, I still think it's great. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, it, it, I, uh, I remember being really bowled over by, um, the scene, Richie's, um, sort of spoiler alert, attempted suicide scene, <laughs> uh, which is still an excellent sequence, but the lead up to it, I was like, Oh, this is as good as <laughs> doesn't matter. It's just because I've been thinking about Asteroid City a lot for the past couple of weeks. Um, oh yeah, because you watched that. Fair. I watched that um, at the beginning of July, um, and I loved it. And I'm still thinking about it. Okay, so I tried to go back to Royal Tenenbaums because I really, really loved Royal Tenenbaums for a while, and it, it's it's still good. It's just it's not quite what I remembered it being. It's very mm. strange. Fair. I never liked it, so I'm like, I can't talk on it because it's. It was like I think I watched it when I was very young, and it was like, eh. yeah. So. Just, I, I was there yeah, looking. At, yeah, I was in. I was in. I was in the Wes Anderson tag on Tumblr. And I was poking through, uh, looking at all the Asteroid City stuff, and I was thinking also about the fact that so many people talk about Grand Budapest as their favorite Wes Anderson movie. I mean, I do like it. I don't think it's my favorite though. I don't. I don't know. Something about it. I'm, a, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't like Wes Anderson style. So uh, me saying that the Grand Budapest Hotel is great is is because that's maybe, like, maybe that's the thing. Maybe yeah. maybe Grand Budapest is the one that all the people who don't like Wes Anderson. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Because <laughs> I love I love Moonrise Kingdom as well. I, I did like all, that. I haven't seen all of them, but um, yeah, I, lo I, lo I really like Moonrise Kingdom. I just I I got. I got myself a bit worked up the other day because I googled uh, Asteroid City, curious about when it was coming out on DVD, and the one star reviews on like the Amazon review bit. There's so many of them, and they're so unwarranted. <laughs> it's like it's just not fair to it. It's just it's such a quiet little movie, but it, I think maybe it's also one of those things that like it was. It, it, it's a movie that it very much appeals to a lot of my personal interest it's got a lot of themes that i'm particularly fond of and i like the way that they it, it you know deals with them that's just mm. a very quiet movie i feel like it's some of the some of the one guy who was like i turned it off after 20 minutes it's got there's nothing happening and i'm like have you never heard of the three-act structure <laughs> <laughs> 
to be <sighs> fair, I did read like very mixed things on it, but um, I think it, it, people have been very harsh on it. I can understand being like, I don't know, but like, I think it because it's not quite as bombastic as some of his other ones. People are like, oh, there's nothing. Wrong. It's, it, it's it's kind of purposefully aimless, and I mm. think that doesn't work for a lot of people. Possible. But, I don't know. It's good. I, I promise. Good. I just believe you on that. I probably won't watch it. I'm not going to lie to you. But simply because Wes Anderson is just not it for me. Mm. I did a lot of Wes Anderson back when I was doing my A levels because we had to. We had a. We had a um, project. Project unit on mm. uh, au- auteurs, and um, I have a big, big Wes Anderson book full of stuff because he's quite an easy one to write about because there's so many like yeah visual things to to talk about. Oh, and- that's true. And all that sort of stuff. Um, but I, he's yeah, just very meticulous, and it's there's there's something about the way that people try to copy him so much, and just in a way that they don't understand <laughs> anything about like why he does what he does. <laughs> like That's... it's not just like pretty shots mm. put together. There are he does have intention behind everything that he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that I mean the. Man definitely has like a freaking great vision and the great way of telling the stories and whatever. Yeah, just it's just like, with you. No, nah, not not really. I'm not gonna lie. Like I like quiet movies, but at the same time, I'm like, you yeah, know, I need a bit more, a bit just a tiny bit more. Wes Anderson might be a bit too quiet for me. I really quiet. They have to be in the right mood for it, obviously. But like a quiet That's movie, true. um, where I get to just sort of like. Those are the types of movies that actually I quite like watching on my laptop, <laughs> like Fair. really late at night, where it, it becomes quite an intimate um, mm. experience. Those are my I, I, that's some, that's some of my favorite movie watching times. Yeah. yeah, fair, 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 fair. We like what we like. Did you yeah. watch anything interesting? Oh yes, oh I yes, did. I did. You did. <laughs> Yes, I did. I was so happy. I was like, <laughs> now for something completely different. <laughs> completely different. <laughs> But it's so good. <laughs> I watched the Mag too, and you know, first I even texted Katie that ah, I'm not watching it on premiere day because, like, you know, I get like insight into the cinema of what kind of what type of people are going into <laughs> this movie, and it's the type that I don't like, aka the ones who talk during the movie. I hate that. Don't do that. It's freaking rude. Blah. Uh, but anyway. I am very happy to report that in the end, like very last minute, I decided, ah, fuck it, I will just go because I want to see big sharks and Jason Statham, and that's it. That's what I want to do. Uh, so I and and then uh, the zero percent Rotten Tomatoes with six fucking reviews was already going around uh, on socials, but I just didn't care. Uh, and I went in. I am first very happy to report that. No one was talking. Everyone was paying attention to the movie, and everyone had a fucking great time. Because Wait, guess what? Is good. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize this was a Ben Wheatley movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, it's 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 look. It's dumb. It knows it is dumb, and that's its strongest thing that it knows that it's it's not smart and it doesn't want to be smart it just wants to be a movie about big freaking sharks jason statton fighting them uh really unrealistic scenarios and that's it and if you can just turn your brain off and just enjoy it it's fucking fun it's the best time i had so much fun watching it and exactly what i needed <laughs> just, sorry i'm so, i'm so like that i, I can thrown me through a loop <laughs> <laughs> the guy who made a field in England. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess at a certain point you just can't be bothered making weird existential um, black comedy British films and you just want to make a movie with a big shark. Yeah, sometimes you just have to do that. And it did a great job. <laughs> really Such funny. a good job. Ben Weekly, who I believe lives in Brighton. I think so too, yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah, there you go. He did a great job. Thank you, Ben. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. I had so much fun. Like it it really was what I needed. Mm. Like it's it's so dumb. But it's <laughs> it knows and it, it just, you know, it just lives in that dumbness and it's like, ah, 
the visuals improved a lot. I gotta say that uh, from the first one, the production design and everything just is just beautiful. And Jason Statham just lives for this, and you know, you love to see that. So you know, if you want to have fun, go watch the Meg. You're not gonna regret it. I can promise you that. <laughs> we all had a great time, and it was fully packed throughout the entire weekend, which is very rare here where I live. It's like one in a million every year basically so that says a lot people just sometimes you just want to watch dumb movies and it's okay it's okay you can it's fun uh so yeah it's gonna be my uh guilty pressure movie i just decided whenever i need to turn off my guilty about it at all I love it. So yeah, I had a ton of fun. I'm so glad I went. So uh, at the moment, I am just aching for horror movies. Uh, so I also also watched uh, Insidious, uh, The Red Door, uh, which, you know, I love the Insidious franchise. I love Patrick Wilson. <laughs> he, he shouldn't direct any movies. I'm sorry, Patrick. You're great. But no, <laughs> this was like the weakest out of all the Insidious movies. Uh, this is his first so. directing gig. I, I think so. I don't think yeah, he, he has the ability to improve. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm mean. Ah, don't worry, Patrick. You can't do it. <laughs> but I, I, as much as I enjoyed it at the beginning, because it was like, it wasn't the in your face scary. It was like the suspense kind of scary. Mm. Like there's this great scene at the beginning in um, uh, after the funeral that they have that uh, uh, Patrick Wilson's character is just sitting in the car. Uh, I think he's talking to someone or just, yeah, he's, no, he's texting his son. Uh, and then in the background, like in blur, you can see someone approaching the car. And it's it's just a very slow approach and the camera doesn't move or anything. And it's like, oh my God, what is that? Like, you, know, you start to think like, Jesus Christ, what is that? And then Patrick moves in view and as, as he goes back, it's no longer there. And I love those moments. Like, you know, it's it's a lot more scarier than ah, jump scare. Mm. Uh, and then it, it just goes away. After a while, it's like, yeah, let's do jump scares. And let's be disgusting because it had a scene that was like, oh. so wasn't happy i i needed a warning it wasn't there so i'm like i'm traumatized not in a good way so yeah that's all i watch i need horror movies i need the boogeyman to finally come out because i i want to see the boogeyman <laughs> that's I, I did i rewatched the first episode of the sandman the other day as well just because it's nice. been years since it came out and i was like maybe and then i stuck it on and i was like fuck i forgot this is a really good series <laughs> It is. It's just really well put together, and I still can't quite get over how good Tom Sturridge's voice is. Is Dream? Oh yeah, it's like, great. Like it, it really is. Like you hear it, and it's like yeah, that's that's what that should sound like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just perfect, right which on I, point. I'm aware well, we said all this in our, our review of the Sandman, which you can watch on our channel or on you know, the podcast platform of your choice. Yep. Um, where we just gushed over it for about an hour. I don't think we have any real. Um, anyway, t- to be honest, I'm I'm just gonna properly rewatch my favorite episode from it twenty four seven a lot because it's the best episode. I'm just I'm gonna die on this hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, all right, let's get into today's topic. We are speaking of Neil Gaiman. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Gaiman is the best. Uh, we are reviewing the Good Omens uh, uh, season two uh, that came out two weeks ago at this point, which is very uh, weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, let's start with overall thoughts without, you know, giving away too much. Oh, I mean, I loved it. <laughs> 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 right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, Hi. No, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's nice to see you all. <laughs> desperately sweet and and just lovely. I, I had rewatched the first season a little while ago in preparation because yes. yes. I hadn't seen it since it came out, and I forgot. I didn't. I was quite surprised by it because I hadn't because I hadn't seen it since it came out. I was quite surprised by how much of it still felt really fresh and familiar. Like mm-hmm. I just watched it really recently because mm-hmm. you know when you have like a, a long period of time between watching something, usually you sit there and go, oh, I've got half of this stuff. It was all very like present and, and familiar and, and all that, um, mm-hmm. all that jazz. But um, uh, I, re- I just this, this is just is a delight, isn't it? 
<laughs> it's a it's a real Jane Austen fueled romantic delight. It um, is. I don't I don't I don't have any like really intense thoughts about it. I just really liked it. Which is fair. Uh I didn't like it that much. I'm not okay. gonna lie. I'm like, you know, because I love Neil Gaiman. This is no secret. I have all his books on that side. Uh, read all of them. Uh, I love the Good Omens. I think they did a really good job uh, turning the Good Omens into a series. And I miss that kind of Good Omens. Like, you know, this was good as well, because obviously, like, not much has changed. I really missed uh, Francis McDormand's narration. I'm not going to lie. Like, there a little bit. There's a little bit, but it's not enough. <laughs> I, I just really like that narration. I missed it here. And and you know, it 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 did feel like which I was afraid of happening, that you know, the first one is based on the book. And this one is like a completely new story, basically. Yeah, this is is quite interesting because um I think if this series suffers from anything, it suffers from being the middle part in a three-part story because uh, no yeah. it does because yeah. i so i follow no game on tumblr uh, and he's very kind and that he constantly is answering questions for people yes um yes. Uh, very sweet and he's not breaking the picket line before anybody starts getting funny about it he just he just he just uh, talks he just answers people's questions and he's mm. been very good um, yes what he has been saying is that this is sort of basically the build up to the sort of sequel that him and Terry talked about for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it, it it very much is the beginning of the next part. And it, so it lives in that space where middle books live, where everything is just sort of like set up. Yeah. Generally speaking. Yeah. Uh, and it's really hard to do that in a way that is satisfying. It's part of the reason why I, I, I found Across the Spider-Verse to be a little bit disappointing, despite the fact that it's not really disappointing. Mm. There's like an element of just sort of like, well, there's no resolution to this. So you kind of sit there like, I just don't really know what to do with myself here, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, but I I just, I like romantic comedies. And I feel like that's probably a sticking point for you here as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> you know me. Like, yeah, it's just not my thing, really. So I'm like, my I I do think that it was very sweet and all that, but it's like it 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 was kind of too sweet at points where I was like, hey, they, I saw a bunch of reviews about this being like it's too saccharine. I'm like, I don't, I, I want uh, saccharine at the moment. <laughs> it's like everything shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind it like it's I'm not saying it was bad because it wasn't it's just it as much as I the first one is definitely like for me like you know it's the kind of thing that I really love mm. this felt a bit off from what I what I really loved about the uh, stupid original good omens it's not the original it's like the, the good omens you know uh so i don't know it's, I just, it's, it's just good omens right there's no the i know i know <laughs> i know but like you know just to put the good that's the good omens for me like you know that's the basis of it all uh and 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 here it means the the <laughs> if that makes sense i still like it but it's like yeah, I found myself a lot of times just, you know, drifting off a bit, like, not in a way that I was falling asleep, but I was like, you know, looking at my phone a lot more. And for me, a general sign uh, with a good series or movie or whatever is that I just don't care about my phone. It's just that, just, you know, notifications can come in. I don't care. I'm watching something. So it's like, yeah. But here, there were a lot of times where I was like, I was a bit bored. Found it delightful. <laughs> delightful is the word. I think cause Neil, when he described it, uh, he used three words, and I can't remember exactly what they were, but they were something like quiet, romantic, and something else, mm. which is fine for me because I like quiet and romantic. But also, <laughs> and real big spoilery time. Yes, um, it's <laughs> it ends in massive tragedy. <laughs> 
um, which I uh, only so I was watching it whilst I was working. Um, yes. Uh, which you know isn't particularly hard because I was doing background checks, which just required a lot of scroll- scrolling, um, and I was getting distracted by it quite constantly. That last um, ten minutes, I was sat because so I've got my screen set up. I've got one here. I've got one here. I have to do my work on this one. And I have my little thing playing on this one. I was sat like this <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, the do- entire end credits played, and I sat there like. I've been hit by a bus. What am I meant to do with this? Yeah. To be fair, that last 10 minutes was the most interesting thing about it. It's like, so, it's so much. It is. But I, that's where I was like, oh, now you pick my interest. And then, then it's over. Like, you know, that's the last episode. And I'm like, that's what I mean about it being set up. Like, but it's, you know, it's, it feels like it's too much of a setup, if that makes sense. Like, that's what that's that's exactly what middle books are like though like pretty much every middle book in a series that i've read i've 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 always always been like because like the whole point of if you think of a three-act structure the whole point of the second act is that like everything has gone wrong right mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. everything's all up in the air and there's no it, it, it you have to do that and obviously get to the third act where they actually re- resolve everything for the final time um but but that's the thing, like, you know, it it, it felt, I, I would even say that, you know, other than the characters that we know, it felt a bit disconnected from the first one, the first season. Uh, I not mind that. To be yeah, honest. but then... That, Cause cause the first it, season, it, but the first season resolved itself. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing that you're talking about, you know, like, you know, so, uh, everything goes wrong. Uh, and that's how the second act comes in. But, but there, like, you know, everything was... Res- that's why I... I don't, you know, it's. I very much appreciate it that we got the we get to see them again because I fucking love them. <laughs> like, but uh, at the same time, when they announced season two, I was like, "But well, why?" <laughs> I feel like this season is going to look a lot better when we get a season three. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's a, there's so much little bits and pieces that um. Yeah, there's there, there, we're this. If the first season is is plot and has like, you know, story and stuff, this is very this is a character piece. Um, mm. It's very much a, a piece about character and people, uh, and specifically these two, um, and the fact that they haven't resolved everything properly or like discussed anything really. Um, so there's a sense of of. Um, yeah, it's a it's a different type of story, um, but these they're so good. <laughs> they are, yeah, they're so good. I mean, they are still the best part of it all, to be honest. Like, you know, Michael oh. Sheen and David Tennant are just freaking masters of their they're craft. So good, and they're so good together. And oh yeah, they're such it's just so like funny together. Mm. I was, I'm I'm in a bit of a I'm, I'm, I somebody sent the um. You know, back in 2015, David Turner got a special recognition award at the NTA. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's you know, that so I, sweet. I watched that again the other day. Yeah. And I, just, I had a little cry because it was yeah. really, it's just one of the sweetest things. That's it is. Ever and he realizes it, that it's about him. It's like, ah, <laughs> come on. Oh, it's, it's, ju- it's just so sweet. I, and, you know, I, I think I've been open enough about this. I feel like I'm not. <laughs> like expressing myself particularly well today. So what happens when I try to do things in the morning? They don't work. My brain is not functional. Um, uh, I've been a long time and very, you know, big, 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 big David Tennant fan um, since I was very wee. Um, hmm. Probably the first actor I, I kind of had under- had an understanding that they were an actor. But like had a real appreciation for them. It was like mm-hmm. probably the first time I had like a favorite actor sort of a vibe, and he has remained so over the years because he's fucking brilliant. But I, I I can't quite get over how um, <laughs> Michael Sheen is the master of like micro expressions. That man can go oh, through he's... so many fucking emotions. <laughs> so good. He has such an expressive face. It's like oh. I was like staring at him 
That mm-hmm. so like the end of the last episode ends with like the credits rolling and the two of them going in entirely different directions after this like fucking yeah. heartbreaking scene. And I was just like transfixed as I was staring <laughs> and watching Michael Sheen go through like I've made the right decision. No, it's fine. Absolutely fine. He's wrong. I everything's great. I'm not hurt at all. And it's just like all of that playing out on his face. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, he's like whew, so good, so good. Like, I'm so glad I met him. <laughs> we, that we got that chance. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and he's the sweetest guy in in person as well. Just got to put that out there. Um, I'm still very sad that I, even though I go to this event, I, 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 I still miss David Tennant so many times. It's like, ah, damn it, one day it's gonna happen. We can do it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I think that. Throughout the entire season two, I was thinking that these two are fucking great. I fucking love them. They were the best choices for these roles. Let's be fair. Uh, but here's the thing. And we agreed because my brother watches it as well. He liked the first season as well. But he never read the the book. So, you know. I read the book either. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't read it. <laughs> you really um, should. I, I, should I, I would be actually a bit, a bit honest about something right now. I read Neverwhere a while ago and I liked it. And then I tried to read American Gods and I just <sighs> couldn't quite get into it. Um, and it, I, and I'm, uh, the conclusion I've kind of come to is that I don't think Neil Gaiman's like prose writing is for me very much. I love everything he's done for television. Mm. Every episode of anything that I've seen him write, I love the sort of many times. I love the Sandman. I really love this series. My username on most of my social media comes from an episode of Doctor Who that he wrote. It's out there as one of my favorite things. I just don't think his prose fits with me particularly well. I don't mm. know. There's like a thing. I it, 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 and I know that he's great because I like reading the stuff that he writes to people. But like there's something about it, I bounce off it in a weird way. I feel like I don't know because I have a bunch of his books. I just never got into any of them really. Um, mm. I don't know. Chad. Um, I had a point to this and I forgot what it was. <laughs> Only you know. <laughs> it's gone. It's, it's the gone. morning. <laughs> it's, it's the, the morning. morning. It's gone, uh, but it, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so my brother watched it, and we like agreed on, on on one thing in particular, uh, and I'm so sorry for the two actresses. It's not against them. I'm sure they are great, but the two women that they choose to to play these important roles, they were for me and for my brother as well. They were so unsympathetic. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was like. Oh, I I should be rooting for them. I don't think I am. Like I I don't know what was it or was their character written away that was just like not vibing with any of us at all. But it it, it felt like you know that especially there you needed something stronger. Maybe in writing, maybe in casting. I'm sorry, uh, I'm not sure what it was. But I was like, yeah, I don't know. I I just didn't care about them at all. Like, I think that that was I kind of a little bit intentional, actually, because I think that the idea is that they're way more invested in them than anybody else is. Because, like, mm. really, they're not really meant to like that. Their story is not is it's their story is a direct parallel to these yeah. two, um, but in a very different, in a, in, yeah, in a slightly different way. Because the whole point is that like. The, the, they're trying to be forced into a, quite a like a cliched tropey situation, which neither of them are actually. Neither of them really want. Mm. Like Nina's in a relationship with mm. somebody terrible, um, mm. uh, which she doesn't know how to get out of. And when she finally does get out of it, um, she's like, "I'm not ready for another relationship. I just broke up with which my is fair. partner." Yeah, and like I think that whole thing is just like these are two people who probably at some point will date and they'll probably get on very well. But yeah. like, the whole idea that they are going to stand in a rainstorm and suddenly fall in love is very, like, that's that's not how things actually work. And they're yeah. trying to fit this sort of, like, packaged um, relationship on top of them to suit their own, um, I say suit their own needs, which makes it sound super m- 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 maniacal, but that's not really what I mean. You know what you, you understand. Mm. It's it's it. 
this is a, they, they they are the thing that they are massively projecting onto because they can't sort out their own stuff, right? Yeah, but you know, but still, if if I feel like that, if you're gonna focus on them so much, like there needs to be something there, at least, you know. I don't know. Maybe it's just it. It was just a me thing, uh, but I was like, I just don't. I, just, I, don't I like them, <laughs> but yeah. like in the way I like everything in this season, where I found it all to be just sort of quietly charming. Yeah, which is fine for me. I love quietly charming. It also is like it's so English. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> in a way that is like this is this is me, and also there's so many little like I love John Finnemore as a writer. And there's yeah. so much of this stuff that is like so deeply John Finnemore esque. Like mm. some of the jokes, the yellow car is a big reference to <laughs> cabin pressure. Um, uh, it, it's like, the, the, and I and I couldn't really quite d- pick out like specific things. I was like, "Well, that's a John Finnemore thing." It's just as a vibe for mm. me, where I'm mm. like, "This just feels very familiar." Um, and and. I, don't know, I just love the way John Finnemore writes jokes. He's a very funny man, and he also is a very sweet writer. It, the whole mm. thing—that's that's the other side of it. It's just that he—I think he understands the sweet nature of what Neil was going for. And th- there's um—I feel like there's a lot of people on online who kind of feel like Neil like bent towards the like, because obviously. People have been shipping these two at nauseum since the late. When did this? It came out in the nineties, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's been a thing since the book came out, and I feel like a lot of people acted like the fandom like pushed him in a direction, and I don't think that that's true at all because he said so himself. No, he said so himself. He was like, "This is the story that I wanted to write. Uh, it's the story that it it and." The, um, quite famously back in like 2005 or something like that mm. he and Terry basically suggested that at some point they settle down together in a little house on the South Downs which is um, like that like it's I think what all Neil did was pull it more into focus um, yeah. like into not sort of grey ambivalent <laughs> space where mm. he was like okay yeah and it's romantic here you go. Yeah, I think he. I think he would be the first person to say if he felt like he was doing something for people. That's true. Neil, Neil, yeah. Neil. I think has always been one of those writers who goes, and even if on some level, like he maybe kind of got to this. I think maybe it wouldn't look like this mm. if it wasn't. Like yeah. exactly like this, if it wasn't for just how like vehement people are, but it would yeah. still end up being romantic. Oh yeah, is that that's that's I think yeah. the main thing I, I've got going on here. Um, I just the I I love I just love so many bits and pieces about this. Did you recognize um Ty Tennant in the episode about Job? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that really cracked me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like I don't know, there's big there's so many discussions about Nepo babies nowadays, but I'm sitting there like that's funny though. Yeah. <laughs> also, he's really good. He is. <laughs> it's true. He's, he's good. Very good. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's just it's it's extremely funny to me that he um that, like I it's just, I don't know I watch it and I'm like yeah you can tell that that was raised <laughs> both by David and George. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fact that uh, Peter Davidson was 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 Job himself, just, it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's good. It's, good. it's a good bit. I don't know, there's just so many little bits and pieces. I love the whole um, uh, the whole episode where Aziraphale um struggles with the, the concept of morality, essentially. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that they, 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 there's so many bits and pieces that actually really set up that final confrontation so well. Mm. In the the fact that um in, in like really solidifying who these two characters are and why they're not quite ready to put the space that they they wanted to i think they both actually really want to be in by the end yeah of it. yeah in that Aziraphale is so he hasn't gotten away from the space 
that heaven occupies in that there is a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things and there mm-hmm. is a, still a thing that looks like evil and good um like that black and white thinking because i think he moves towards this gray space but he's still too caught up in the idea that like to be a demon is to be evil which is oh, yeah, not 100 percent, yeah true and i think no. he, like he, i think it, at some level he knows that but like it's so built into him he can't let it yeah go. because if you think about it he should be the one who knows that my you know mm. i mean probably is right there <laughs> So, like that's if that's 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 what trauma will do to and i think i think and i think that was that's what um being in a space where you kind of get used to the exception and it's like well you're just sort of the exception sort of a thing and i think mm. that might be a bit like <laughs> that feels kind of rude uh, for a uh, zero because there's there obviously is a deep amount of care and oh, yeah, love yeah. that he has uh for him um yeah. but uh, it 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 Oh, somebody somebody put it really well on on Tumblr, um, where it was like, um, oh, I wish I could remember this precise wording, but it was about like how with Crowley's asking, um, or no, Aziraphale's asking Crowley to, um, you know, come back to heaven. Crowley saw that as him saying that he wasn't good enough. Yeah, and, yeah. But what Aziraphale meant was that he was going to make heaven good enough for Crowley. Like he, they, 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 it, it's like he, the, the intention, like that's, that's the thing about these things, um, is that like they miss each other, right? Mm. It, mm. It, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's, 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 it's two people. It's, it's, it's a comedy of errors sort of thing. It's like just a total misunderstanding. It's two people who, as Nina and <laughs> and Maggie pointed out by the end of it, have never actually had a real conversation. Not really, yeah, no. <laughs> they've known each other for six thousand years, and yeah. they've just never really had like an actual conversation about like their feelings and what they want and all this sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and the first that he tries, so oh my god, David is so good in that scene. It's so heartbreaking because he's like he is Mister Axis of Service, <laughs> and he has to do words of affirmation, and it just is. Oh my gosh. Fuck Metatron, that's what I have to say. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I, I, uh, my two cents about the whole thing is John Hamm is fucking great. Oh god, he's so funny. Fu- <laughs> f- so fucking funny. I, lo- I was like, every Hi. time he was on screen. <laughs> Dusting. <laughs> Dusting. That, uh, that Jake- character, very specific, that's such a John Finnemore. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so John Finnemore. Like yeah. that, I think if if if, any, if anything feels particularly that it's it's the way that he, Jim was written that yeah. kind of slightly ditzy, um, just lovably stupid sort of vibe. Mm-hmm. It, it that it read tracks so quite a, a to B with with Arthur Shappy to me. Yeah, um, every time he was on screen, I was like, Jim, <laughs> I love you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking love that arc for him. Uh, love the resolution to his story as well. Uh, and I saw because this is not my thoughts. I saw it on TikTok and I really liked the whole concept behind it. So that's like the second thing that I I really liked about the whole thing because I think this, I think it was made by, I don't know, I don't remember. Never mind, a fan. Uh, so basically, uh, at the end, Gabriel says that. Uh, you know, being with Beelzebub is like, you know, being in heaven and the other way around, like being in hell. Right. And yeah. And uh, someone pointed found out. Home in you. That's the yeah. whole thing. Someone pointed out that uh, um, at the, uh, one of the scenes when Aziraphale and Crowley are drinking, they said to the world and uh, for, you know, for them, they were each other's words. So it wasn't like about heaven and hell. She put it so much better than I do. But, uh, you know, I, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes so much more sense because in their core, they love the world. They love the 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 food, the coffees, uh, the books, they everything. That, that The humanity, yeah. And and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I really like that. And I think that's one of the things that's going to be really interesting about season three when we get it. <laughs> 
hopefully we'll get it. <laughs> no, I'm looking. I'm looking at Amazon very directly in the eye. It's not I mean, one it's... in every way. You know yeah. what they're going to do. Um, yeah. Obviously, we won't hear any news until they uh, sort their shit out with the strike. Um, yep. <laughs> it's fine. Um, um, but the the other side of things is that Crowley is so insistent that like running away is going to fix things, mm. which it won't, because that's also not helpful. They yeah. have to sort things out at home, and like yeah. they come to a resolution. It is it's the, like it's the it's the marriage of two things. You know, two opposites. And, yeah, I don't know. I'm saying words. Just I, I thought <laughs> it's just a like words salad. Um, uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. It's just that it's so many little bits and pieces that I was so fond of. I really liked watching Aziraphale go on his little adventure with his little reporter's hat on, asking questions. <laughs> that was fun. I like watching him. Um, fail uh, at magic. Mm. Yep. <laughs> um, he tried. He did. I thought it was such a sweet. Little bit. I love. Um, here's a question. Here's a, here's I think the sticking point question. Okay. Do you like any Jane Austen stuff? No. There you go. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I think that that really is the big thing. Um, because this is. It's a Jane Austen story. <laughs> it, it kind of felt like it. No good so, lie, yeah. I mean, it's and it's very intentional. It's in the state. It's in the oh, text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It is um, essentially a uh, kind of a weird mix of like Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion and um, a little bit Emma. Um, and in in so many ways, um, it's like the I, I saw somebody um, uh, suggest that like that ending part was basically Mister Darcy's first attempt to tell Miss yeah. Elizabeth Bennet that he was in love with her yeah. <laughs> sort of like um sort of thing. It's just that it yeah, it's that whole genre of like um um they they, they I'm thinking about like Shakespeare comedies in that like and it's it's farcical. Like the whole thing is farcical. It's mm. a lot of people who don't know and kind of bumble around each other and then mm. they crash into each other in a way that means that everything sort of falls apart it's just yeah i i, I, I i'm such a sucker for pride and prejudice i love like I know, I know like lots of people are very big into the bbc series um and i have seen that and it is wonderful and colin first is an excellent mr darcy I'm oh yeah also, we agree on that um i'm also just a very big fan of the movie um who can resist Matthew McFadden walking across a field at dawn. <laughs> it's so not for me. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's like... just I, I watched it like at like midnight the first time, and I was just yeah. like, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> I, just... I rewatched all of the Lizzie Bennet diaries recently. Um, have you ever seen Lizzie Bennet diaries? No. It was a web series, modernized version of Pride and Prejudice, done through mm. vlogs. It was mm. produced by Hank Green back in the early, like about 10 years ago at this point, I think. Okay. Um, uh, they did 100 episodes. It is so well done, the way that they update everything for like the modern day. Um, mm. Ashley Clemens is is Lizzie Bennett, um, and she's so charismatic. And like you can, and you really can see the whole point of like, like how the, the whole term, like why it's called Pride and Prejudice. Like she's like, it, and it, it's, it's fucking genius. Like they, they're all these like, they're quite short episodes. Because mm. they're like little tiny vlogs, by and they're very jump cutty in the way that the Block Brothers videos have always been quite jump cutty. Mm. Um, but they're very easy to watch, and you could watch it all in a day quite easily. Um, uh, and it, it's like you can really because they spend you don't see or like meet Darcy for like sixty episodes, so oh, all wow. you have is Lizzie's like scathing, constant mm. scathing, um, like indictment of how how Darcy did this and Darcy did this and he's so awful and like he's done all these things and all this sort of stuff um so when you finally do meet him and he he does the whole thing of like Lizzie I'm in love with you and she's like the feeling is not mutual and you really understand why because like you get like you you meet you meet Jane and you see the whole like process of like how he came to like 
break up Jane and Bing. But they call him Bing, his name. He's not Mister Bingley. He's Bingley. Mm. Like, it's just he's. And, oh, it's so it's so well done. And it, it and, and any any Mister Darcy needs to be slightly autistic. Like, that's just the way that they go. Like it's so socially anxious, doesn't understand people, kind of thing. Um. Uh. And the, the guy, I can't remember his name. It's like Daniel something, uh, I think. Um, but he's so wonderful. He wears these little suspenders, little bow ties. Um, and they get that point onwards when when he comes in and he they start to she starts to come become come over be overcome. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, her prejudice, and he starts mm. to see more about like, um, you know, the fact that Jane really did love being and all these sorts of bits and pieces. They, their love story becomes so it's so well done. And the chemistry is excellent, and all mm. the sort of bits and pieces. I just think there's there, there's so much in that. I mean, it, it's just a reason reason that it's a story that like has um, lasted for so long. Yeah, um, and I did. There's just so many bits and bit to bring it back around. There's so many. It, it is heavily paralleled into all of this. Um, I fully like squealed in the episode when when the heat maybe puts together that ball. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, we need to talk about those bunch of demons outside. It's like, well, we can talk about it while we dance. And I'm like, oh, my God, they're dancing together. <laughs> it like was a good a, dance. I'm not I, like a, I like a Regency romance. And it, it had all of these bits and pieces in it that are so delightful. I don't know. I can't. I don't have a, critical thoughts. I just really liked it. That's fair. <laughs> I like the fact that their kiss was really bad. Like it's it because it, it's so desperate. It really was, yeah. It's, it's not a like, good kiss, but like that's no. kind of the point. It was like a last ditch effort to be like, I'm gonna just do a thing, and and like you could you watching Michael Sheen after he pulls away is like that man has never under like the idea of like pleasures of the flesh has never been a thing. That like, that's probably the first time he's ever kissed anybody. Doesn't know what to do with that, and it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I love tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you really so do. <laughs> <laughs> you really do like it. Uh, I don't know. It's just yeah. You know, I I liked it, and and you know, I I honestly thought it was sweet, but it's this is just kind of not for me entirely. And I think it's because of these reasons that we just mentioned. Like you know, I'm not big on Jane Austen. Uh, I I. I don't like when Sorry. I was just thinking about. I really like the ongoing bit that Jane Austen like in like um, oh yeah yeah <laughs> was like the mask behind behind like a massive robbery. That's, that was really things. fun. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I was that. laughing at that. I was like, okay, uh, it would make sense, kind of <laughs> hiding behind this big romantic writer <laughs> and then just you know just doing a robbery on the side. There you go. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just. The first one is so iconic for me because I I basically that was uh after you know I wasn't big on reading and after getting into reading mm. uh it was like the second big thing that I ever read. Five. And even though I was like still very young at that time because I was I don't want to say something stupid. I think I was like 14 when I first read it. It was still like just so good. I had I laughed so hard <laughs> a lot of times, and I just enjoyed the whole story that uh, Neil and Terry put together. That I was like, you know, I was I I read it like five times or something like that. I don't even I don't know. Like sometimes I would just think of it, and I'm like, ah, I should read Good Omens, and that's it. And I'm very happy that we have an excellent uh, Good Omens TV series. Uh, and it, it's just I don't know what's the right word. Maybe it is disconnected from what it originally was and what it was all about in the first place for me personally. Uh, but at the same time, I see the potential for sure. Like, you know, I do want season three, especially after this ending, because I fucking, <laughs> I've, I fucking hate when they do this so much. But, you know, I agree. Please do season three. <laughs> if you finish like this, just please really bring it in can't Just... quite express to you how much I was literally sat there. So I don't know if you saw, a couple of months ago there was a massive leak, right? Um, 
Did you see any of this? No. no so there, there, there was a big leak, um, the Good Omens leak, in that basically Amazon put out a promo piece of promo material that spoiled something massive, and then took it down quite quickly. But it, it was out on the internet, um, and yeah. it was it was a, it was like quite disappointing for a lot of people. The Good Omens fandom, to their credit, were very good about keeping mum about the whole thing. Anybody who saw it was actually like. We'll keep unless like you really went and looked like found or looked for it. Um, it, it was quite difficult to find. I just saw a lot of people talking about the fact that there was a leak more than actually I saw the leak. I did end up finding it because somebody posted about it and was like, understandably, uh, put it under like a you know the spoiler thing that you can kind of do on 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 Twitter. Um, I because I I liked the first series, but for whatever reason at the time I did not go insane about it i think it was the i think it was the hype i think i just sort mm. of was like i liked this but i didn't I'd like the sometimes when something like that has like that much intensity around it you can kind of bounce off it mm. because people like it so much it's a, it's a strange little thing um and i i yeah i watched it and i was like yeah it was nice and i didn't really watch it again i don't it, it, it never quite made sense to me because it should it has all the elements of like something that i should enjoy desperately um and i i do still like it i actually think because this is something so new and I get to experience it along with everybody else who hasn't already been into it for so long, there's something about this that means that I kind of am able to take a little bit more ownership over it so I can kind of enjoy it a bit more. Yeah. It's a, a whole thing. Um, but the leak was the kiss. Okay. Uh, and I saw it because I didn't really care about the spoilers. So I knew it was coming. Uh, and I was kind of working myself. I was like, they haven't done it yet. They're going to leave it to like the last fucking minute, aren't they? So like the whole setup towards like what that was going to look like was kind of in the back of my mind for a lot of it. Uh, okay. Um, and yeah, I did feel like I'd been hit by a car, and I had to like I was sitting there like I still have work to do. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, um. I it, it really like uh, smacked me uh, in in the face, uh, and I'm always a fan of anything that can get me to to do that. Um, yeah, I think I think it, I can tell. I, mean, I think you can tell, generally speaking, that this is mm. the first step in in something that is going to end. And I think the part of the reason why I can enjoy it so much is that I think you can really tell that this is going to end in a good place. Like it's not going to be something Probably, that's going to yeah, absolutely yeah. fall apart. Um, uh, Neil said himself that he wants it to end happily, um, mm. and happily looks like the two of them getting a house in the South Downs, <laughs> as, it's, as, it's, as it seems. But like the process of getting there excites me, so I'm just I'm, I'm excited for them to to do more and um, get to be clumsy and, and stupid and I guess talk about the second coming. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> again, that's the other thing that sounds like plot. That definitely does, yeah. If they get a ditch on that, that's weird. <laughs> um, yeah. I think the one last thing I'll say is that because this was, this was, a lot of this was a result of, like the the intimacy surrounding like this season. In that there's not as much branching off mm. like story and all this other stuff. Part of that comes from the fact that this was filmed during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, like a lot of this kind of comes out of the fact that there was, you know, we have pandemic uh, mm. Mm. based production uh, issues, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think they finished filming in like 2021. Because yeah. Neil said that it takes about a year for post production, mm. which means that we need the right strike to get resolved sooner rather than later so that we don't have to wait <laughs> another four years. Oh, God. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. I can see it happening. Yeah, I can see it too. We'll see. We'll see. We gotta get there. Uh, all right. I'm interested to hear your rating of this second season. I give it an eight. 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 All right. I think an eight is a good number. Really right. positive. Mm. In that space. I just. I, I'm. I'm fond. I think. <laughs> I think we're in that space as well, where I think I can agree that it's not like. It's not as like clearly polished as that mm. uh, that first season is because that first season is such a, like a an established thing. Yeah. Um, and this, whereas this is something new, um, yeah. I and you know I've said this many times. I quite like things that feel a little bit rough around the edges, mm. like just a smidge, because I think mm. that they feel a bit more real and 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 human that way. So yeah. that makes it more wonderful to me. 
Yeah, fair, fair, fair. I was going with an eight, but then uh, you, you, seven, seven and a half. Let's do seven okay. and a half. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. Like two you different know. quite sides of an eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I like that. And you know, I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen or what's the end game of it all. But uh, at the same time, for now, it feels a bit meh for me personally. But I don't. I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. It's not bad at all. Like you know, it's it still has its same charm. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just hopefully season three comes out and and I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, actually, you know, looking back at it, great. We need more God. Like I need Francis McDormand to narrate I in my ear. I feel like I saw Neil say something about why Francis wasn't in this one as much, and I feel like it was something to do with the pandemic. Well, I might be lying. Uh, <laughs> we will we'll never know or maybe we will once we google it somebody, <laughs> somebody will find the answer and just tell us that would be yes nice. yeah, that, that can work too uh so yeah that was our review of good omen season two uh we have been back and i think next week we're just gonna do the our little catch-up uh of what we watched in the two months that we, that we didn't really do this yeah. uh unless something comes along again we have to talk about it yeah, yeah. never know you never know. But we will be Everybody, here. Is there anything going on in August? Uh, not by Ahsoka, obviously. Uh, and more way. in the movies. August. Movies. Uh, Releases. Check, I don't know if anything like huge is coming out. 2023 August movies. Yes. I'm looking. I'm looking. She's looking. None of this looks particularly interesting. Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out, but I wasn't particularly interested in that. I'm interested in that I'm not gonna lie. Meg, yes. Uh, I don't know any of these. Uh, the, I'm interested in the, the last journey of the. I'm not, it's not gonna come to me. Anyway, the Dracula story. Uh, the ship. I don't know what the title is. That's coming out. Not heard that. But, or less. I don't know what's. Oh, no, this is Go- Google it. Google it. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, I will take this time quickly to say that uh, you will see double of me. Uh, starting from uh, you know when Ahsoka drops because we're gonna do over and cow soup uh, an Ahsoka related podcast. So. You will, you, will, you will see me twice every week here and then there as well <laughs> so just be prepared and if you want to see like weekly breakdowns of every Ahsoka episode with uh, crazy fans like myself uh, then you know, just tune in, we're going to leave the link in the description when it is time uh, for it uh, and yeah, uh, be back next week, thank you for you know keep coming and listening to us mm-hmm. uh, and if you want to see more then just subscribe and just keep you know just yeah just stay in the loop stay in the loop we're here and we love you all and watch movies yeah yes watch movies bye bye